Welcome back to Marvelous Videos, The Splinter, Extraterrestrial Parasite Fungus Explained. A recipient of six awards at the Screamfest Horror Film Festival, we are talking about the 2008 horror flick, Splinter. Besides winning honors for Best Score, Best Special Effects, Best Editing, Best Makeup, Best Directing, and even to Best Feature, the movie was also nominated for Best Horror Film at the 35th Annual Saturn Awards. But sadly, it lost out to Guillermo del Toro's Hellboy 2, the Golden Army. You will be further surprised to know that despite getting nominated at Spike TV's 2009 Scream Awards for the most memorable mutilation for the arm removal scene, Splinter actually lost again, this time to David Hackle's Saw 5's Pendulum Trap. Filmed over the course of 20 days, it is directed by Toby Wilkins and stars Shea Wingham, Paulo Costanzo, and Jill Wagner in the leading roles. The flick, despite having a limited theatrical release, happens to be a gem of a movie, one with quite the haunting concept and brilliant execution. So, in in today's video, we're not only going to talk about the movie, but also explore the extraterrestrial parasite fungus itself in great detail. Are you ready for this? Before we go into today's video, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small step for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thanks. Now, on with the video. What? I can't believe this. It's... I think it's feeding. The movie's plot. A pump attendant at a sleepy gas station gets attacked by some splinter-infected animal. Soon, his body starts contorting. The scene then shifts to a young couple, Seth Blazer and Polly Watt, who have plans of camping in the forests of Oklahoma as part of their romantic getaway. However, their plans get completely crushed when they are carjacked by a fugitive named Dennis Farrell and his drug-addicted girlfriend, Lacey Belle Isle. The group faces a flat tire when they run over a splinter-infected animal on the road. While changing tires, Dennis gets a splinter on his finger from the tire. The knockdown animal starts twitching unnaturally, and the group drives away to find shelter at a now-deserted gas station, where the movie began. Dennis gets Polly inside the store, pick up some supplies, and by then, Former's finger has started getting all gross. Lacey, on her way to the washroom, opens the door to find the pump attendant from the first scene dreadfully infected and writhing around inside. She doesn't warn the others, but gets attacked instead and killed by the creature in the process. Those remaining race back inside the store and lock themselves inside. The creature lays to rest on the hood of the hot car, and in spite of being dead, Lacey begins twitching herself. Dennis goes back to check on her, but Lacey's reanimated corpse soon attacks him, and he crawls back inside. The zombified Lacey starts violently banging her head against the window. The group tries escaping from the back door, but fail to do so. It is while fighting her that the trio realize that even the detached pieces of the infected victims are capable of assaulting on their own. Sheriff Terry Frankel arrives at the scene in hopes of arresting Dennis and to save the day, but gets torn in half by the reanimated corpse of Lacey, much to the trio's horror. The creature conjoins the officer's upper body with itself and becomes a much larger beast. With a part of a creature's arm chasing after the trio, they manage to hide themselves in the freezer. In the meantime, Dennis's infection has become a lot worse, and his left arm begins to twist, contort, break, and pop violently on its own. He informs the duo about being pricked by a splinter from the animal that they had run over earlier. They end up amputating his arm to stop the infection from spreading any further. Seth discovers that the creatures themselves are actually some kind of fungus or mold, ones who are controlling the corpses that they infect, devouring their blood and using the existing zombified host to look for new hosts. It's because of this that they hunt their prey based on the temperature, attacking the next warmest thing that they can find. Seth is able to get to the police car by lowering his body temperature below normal with bags of ice. The plan is to take control of the cop car radio and get help. Polly and Dennis start lighting firecrackers at the back door to distract the creature. While Seth does make it to the car safely, his plans are foiled when he discovers that he needs the key to turn the car on to power the radio. Otherwise, it is quite useless. The creature makes its way to Seth when the latter's body temperature begins rising, and this leads Dennis to go outside and distract the beast once again. It follows him back to the store and starts ravaging the shop. Dennis and Polly are forced to hide in the freezer once again. The lighter fluid ignites and the gas station catches on fire. Seth, who had managed to retrieve a shotgun from the police car, helps Polly and Dennis escape. 
Dennis volunteers to keep the creatures at bay, and goes without saying that he too gets infected. While he does manage to shoot one of the diesel tanks with the shotgun, the creature gets overwhelmed in flames and eventually dies. But sadly for Dennis, he is still infected. He gives away a key to a bank account to Seth and Polly, telling them to give it to the wife of a man who he had shot earlier. After this, he shoots straight at the propane tank and dies a martyr. The movie ends with a visual of various other infected corpses lying dormant in the forest. Boasting a runtime of 82 minutes, Splinter begins on a premise that has been done many times before. Nevertheless, this flick still deserves a bit of special mention for being able to craft and execute it so well. The plot is pretty basic. We have a monster, a desolate location, and a bunch of people trying their very best to survive the situation. Mind you, the production value looks great. The creature is bound to haunt you in your nightmares, and the movie itself boasts a well-rounded, likable, and most importantly, believable cast. To those who are yet to watch this movie, it is highly entertaining and quite refreshing if we might add so, right from the start till the end credits roll. Also, it would not be completely wrong to say that the concept of the creature seems to be inspired by John Carpenter's 1982 sci-fi classic, The Thing. But then again, it is up to you to see and decide for yourself. Extraterrestrial Parasitic Fungus Explored Where can one even begin while talking about this parasitic alien? One who has a particular perchant for jabbing itself into both animals as well as humans. And if only it would stop at that, which we all know is not the case. Post the jab, not only does it kill its victims, but also ends up reanimating their corpses like zombies and takes full control over them. Say hello to the main antagonist of the movie, known as the Splinter Fungus. Just picture this. The creature is so tough that it is easily capable of puncturing even through the undercarriage of a car. This clearly means that it is no ordinary being. As deduced by the character of Seth in the movie, the creature is actually some kind of a fungus, which takes control of the bodies, infects, and then consumes the blood present in our bodies. In other words, it digests whatever it touches. Next, it uses the zombified host to seek out new subjects to infect and devour. The creature hunts on the basis of temperature, attacking whatever is the warmest, which, in simpler terms, means blood and life. With this newfound knowledge, the remaining survivors are able to make out that keeping themselves cold or cooler than the ambient temperature will basically make them invisible. This is why Seth is seen lowering his body temperature by using ice from the gas station, and no wonder he is able to sneak past the monster to get to the police car. However, here is the eerie part. The detached portions of the infected people, or animals for that matter, can attack on their own and don't even require a body to do so. So what exactly is this thing besides being the primary villain of the movie? Well, for all we know, it is a parasitic being that jabs itself into living things, primarily humans. It resembles a sea urchin with black spiky protrusions or say thin black quills. But what it is known for is possessing the body of organisms after they are dead or killed. Here's an interesting trivia fact that might intrigue you. It is reported that the splinter fungus in the movie is actually partially based on the cordyceps fungus that infects ants and cicadas, turning them into zombified puppets, or let's say fungal zombies for that matter. A much clearer example of this would be the 2017 Australian post-apocalyptic horror drama flick Cargo. Anyway, coming back to the creature on display here, it has the ability to sense body heat very well, and primarily hunts based on this. It goes without saying that it can effortlessly cut through things with its spiky protrusions. In fact, they are so hard that it can cut straight through metal as well. Surprisingly, it has the ability to join parts of an organism together, let's say multiple hosts for that matter, to make a larger mass. It can also shoot quills to infect new hosts, and it moves very fast, especially when it takes on a new body. Of course, the splinter has its share of weaknesses as well, the main one being, of course, that it can only sense heat. This means that it has a very limited level of intelligence and can be avoided by simply staying inside someplace that's cold, or say keeping one's body temperature colder than that of the ambient temperature. Well, if you can do that the way Seth did, well, you're basically invisible to them. He can't see you, and thus, it won't track you. In short, it would not really care. The creature is also quite attracted to heat, so much so that it will literally go to the extent of actually throwing itself into a fire. Mind you, without a host body, it is extremely weak and slow. Also, 
just in case you were wondering what would happen if it can no longer use a host body or does not have one, well, it will lie, keep a low profile, and wait for another host to come along and touch it. One thing that's known for sure is that getting infected with this thing is always lethal. You will die, and that's an affirmative. Of course, there are some exceptions, and by that we are stressing on the amputation before the infection spreads. Having said that, if it infects certain areas, like your stomach, neck, or even head for that matter, you cannot really do much without those. You are pretty much dead. Organisms that have been integrated into core mass of the splinter, or have needle-like hyphae emerging from their bodies, are basically considered dead as well. The splinter is always on the lookout for accessible biomass, but to look for new sources or ways to spread itself in the movie, it is observed searching for and chasing after warm bodies and warm things. It attacks its prey by effectively impaling them. Even one single splinter is quite capable of causing widespread infection if it's left unattended. The end result would be a lumbering mass of dead meat, probably from different bodies, impaled on the splinters in such a way that it can be used by the splinter fungus organism to move around and find its next prey. So where did the splinter come from? Maybe if we figured out where it came from, we could understand more about the organism. Based on the movie, we don't really know for sure because it's not explicitly mentioned. Until recently, when we were made to believe that this thing simply started emerging. It takes over very fast. It is very quick to infect hosts, be it far or near. It also makes the infected host bodies very aggressive and seek out more prey to digest whatever it touches. The splinter organism bears resemblance to Onocordyceps unilateris, which is an insect pathogen fungus or a parasitic fungus that kills or severely disables insects. Currently, the cordyceps is mostly found in tropical forest ecosystems. It affects ants of the Campotini tribe, and the entire pathogenesis is defined by changes in the infected ants' behavioral patterns. These infected ants will leave their canopy nests and stop hunting for food to get closer to the forest floor, where the temperature and humidity are ideal for fungal growth. Next, they attach themselves to a large vein on the underside of a leaf using their mandibles, where the host will stay until it dies, and even afterwards. This process takes at least 4 to 10 days and includes a reproductive stage in which the fruiting bodies grow from the ant's head and bursts out to release the fungus spores, precisely how cordyceps reproduces. However, on the basis of how this film is made, if you pay attention to the introduction part, especially when the opening credits are still rolling, you will see a sign that says, Keep Out, Mid-State Oil Inc. Experimental Extraction Field Site. Well, generally, when people put up hoardings like that in a movie, it is a given that this foreshadows that something bad is about to happen. Why else would the sign be focused on a good few seconds until it had something to do with the movie? And now we all know what happened next. Are they extraterrestrial? There is a high possibility that something might have landed on Earth that brought them here. But honestly, even though this fungus is highly aggressive and complex, it would not take years of evolution for it to evolve into something like this. Well, for it to become this aggressive, there would have to be some kind of a catalyst to make it advance this way. After all, we do have something similar to this, called the rabies virus. And while it is true that it does not use zombified animals, does specifically change the animal's behavior to make them both confused and aggressive enough to want to go out and bite another living thing, despite the danger to themselves. Therefore, it's not too far-fetched to think that the splinter creature is something from our very planet, more like unearthed from a cave or disturbed from its initial underground habitat. We don't know a lot about it, but this thing is a lot more complex in terms of how it functions. That does not necessarily mean that its origin is from outer space, but at the same time, it's not that far-fetched either to believe that it might be from outer space, because an alien planet to us is the same as our planet to an alien. If a planet can support a complex life, the organisms are bound to attain similar body plans to fulfill a niche, as creatures do here on Earth. With the splinter being so hostile, wherever it came from had to have been hostile enough for it to evolve in this actively intimidating way. Chances are that there wasn't a lot of fire or interaction with fire from where it came from. It evolved to track warm-bodied prey, and initially the splinter would just lie there, waiting for something to come into contact with it. So, it is possible that they grew on some sort of a plant, or whatever the planet's version of a plant would have been waiting for a small animal to come and investigate it while trying to feed. And post this, it would get a splinter on its body, and the fungus would utilize the animal's body to get more prey. That is, if it's from outer space. 
Why would they put pieces of organisms together? Besides the shock value of body horror in this film, what could possibly be the growing benefit? Well, it is probable that the splinter organism is just utilizing whatever is available to it. Maybe the creatures on its world, if it indeed came from outer space, were smaller, and for them to take on bigger creatures, especially ones that would help them breed more, they also had to have the right amount of mass to take them down. Even though technically, if larger creatures were to just get pricked by one splinter, the job would be done, and they'd still be infected. But it is a given that you can infect something much faster if you have a larger mass and more surface area to put your spikes and splinters in. The splinter organism utilizes parts of its victim's bodies to help with mobility and capture more prey. The more moving parts or pieces, the more they are likely to get the better of their prey and catch more. The splinter creature is able to jump over the roof effortlessly in this movie, whereas its dead host would not have been able to pull off such antics when they were alive. This gives us a hint that the creature probably climbed and jumped very high or lived in all sorts of terrain. At all costs, the splinter must get to its prey no matter where it is. The creepiest part about this creature is the fact that it can go on and on, chasing the target without ever getting tired in the first place. If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to send a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. For Marvelous Videos, I'm Rylan. Have a good one and be safe. He killed the other girl. He killed everything. He's gonna get a new... He's gonna kill him.